He was born into fortune and power, only to have it all taken away from him at the tender age of one. He was raised by a family that didn't love him. He battled the most evil wizard known to man and lived to tell the tale. But despite all his travails, Harry Otter went on to forge his own legacy, first in the wizarding world and then beyond, when the story of his adventures became the stuff of publishing legend. Tonight, we bring you the true, uncut, behind-the-scenes life story of Harry Otter, wizard, celebrity, legend. It's entertainment, it's entertainment, yeah, it's alright, yeah, yeah, it's alright, yeah, it's entertainment, it's entertainment, yeah, it's alright, yeah, yeah, it's alright, yeah. Times were good for young Harry Otter. After seven years of intense schooling, the world's most famous wizard in training was finally about to make his way in the world. Upon graduation in the late 1980s from the world's preeminent prep school for wizards, Harry was deluged with offers from the wizard community. But young Harry had other ideas. Harry wanted to play ball. Though many in the wizarding world were disappointed with his decision and skeptical that Harry could survive in a professional league, Harry soon brought cheers from even his severest detractors. Yes, he was a capable player. Just capable? He was phenomenal, okay? The best there ever was, not one better bar none. There I said it. Are you satisfied? With his success on the pitch came additional fame and fortune for Harry, fuel for the fire. He just became a he just became a complete megalomaniac. And this was before college. This was before college. But he certainly had a big enough head, you know. But once he became uh, the cup's most valuable player, well, forget about it, you know. You have to take everything that Ronnie says about Harry with a grain of salt. Harry wasn't a complete megalomaniac at school. He had his moments. He was just being Harry. Harry and I, we had a bit of a fling way back, once upon a dream. Of course, Ronnie and I had at the time already been together for quite some while. Though I don't know how it happened to be quite frank and it was strange to be all at once keeping the secret from poor Ronnie and at the same time being jealous of all the little groupies throwing themselves at dear Harry. He was a darling, always was. When we first knew each other back at school we just never seemed to be able to get the timing right. But years later, I happened to be at a game. And who should come by? Game winner in hand, of course, but dear Harry himself. We went to dinner that night. He wasn't quite the little shy boy that I'd known, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Harry's a real sweetie. And we had fun while we were together, but damaged goods especially after the accident. The accident. In the finals, Harry was blindsided and thrown to the ground, sustaining injuries which cut short his days as a professional player. Harry was devastated. Once out of the hospital, he fell into a deep depression and turned to substance abuse as an outlet for his despair. But those who knew and loved Harry best were about to take action that would give Harry's life new meaning. Coming up after the break, Harry goes back to school. By the age of 20, Harry Otter was already a hero to the wizarding Harry Otter was already a hero to the wizarding world twice over. But an accident on the ball field turned his life upside down, and Harry was looking for new direction. Those looking out for Harry tried to steer him back on course. Well, I, I told him that he should play it safe, you know. I mean, after all, I'm not only his agent, I'm his godfather as well. So Harry made a decision that would change his life forever. He went back to school. 
I thought it'd be a good idea for him to get a taste of the college life. You know, more importantly, I figured that him going to a, a non-wizard college might put him back in his, in his place, if you know what I mean. The bloke was getting a little bit of a big head. Every witch and wizard knows of Harry, so naturally they throw themselves at his feet. In the non-magic world, he's just another tall, skinny kid with glasses. I don't think it helped he decided to attend university in Portugal. But it was at university in Portugal that Harry met English professor and aspiring writer J.K. Rowling. Neither of their lives would be the same again. Well, I was an awful student. I just didn't seem to fit in at first. And Professor Rowling was trying to engage me, and I just pretty much flew her off. But then one day, we were discussing all of the twists. And she was going on about Little Ollie and how he was an awful. And that just struck a nerve. And I just felt from that point on that I could trust the story of my story. I could, I could tell her. I, and I wanted to tell her. So I, I did. Harry told Rowling about his first encounter with the world's most dangerous wizard as a baby and about his days growing up with his aunt and uncle. He eagerly recounted the happinesses and horrors of prep school and of being the world's most famous wizard. I think college was a great time for Harry. He was happy, really, really happy for the first time in so many years. If nothing else, he finally got a chance to get everything off his chest. Harry did not realize then how much his life was about to change. I mean, for crying out loud, the guy was his biggest god. That just kind of plays with your mind, don't you think? In the mid-1990s, Harry had finished college and again was faced with considering what to do with the rest of his life. Meanwhile, Rowling had put the finishing touches on her new children's book, inspired by her conversations with Harry. The book was released in the summer of 1997 and was an instant hit. And so was Rowling. You know, it was really overwhelming at first. I was just memorializing Harry's anecdotes like a biographer and it suddenly occurred to me what a great story this is. The story was all there, fully formed, and I had such an enthusiasm for it. You know, I firmly believe that nothing in life is more important than enthusiasm. But Rowling wasn't the only one affected by the success of the books. All of a sudden, Harry's fame was not limited to the wizarding world. A new star had been born. He was a little bit different after the books came out. Everything was a little bit different. On the heels of his new triumph, Harry came to America. The British publishers, interested in securing the rights to his continuing adventures and afraid of losing him to competitors overseas, were eager to show Harry how important he was to them. They made Harry an offer. My agent says, hold on. I'm kind of the film like I have a real thought about the he was, he was rich beyond your wildest dreams among wizards, and he was, he was rich beyond your wildest dreams among non-wizards. <laughs> Did I say he was as big as God? He was bigger! With his newfound success, Harry decided that he had held on to the pain of his parents' death long enough. In an effort to erase the memory of the traumatic encounter with the Dark Lord and move on with his life, Harry underwent elective cosmetic surgery to have the famous scar on his forehead removed. It was quite a simple procedure, really. Buzz, buzz. That was it. He seemed quite pleased with the results. I certainly was. But though the scar was gone, the pain was still there. Harry's sorrow and anger would begin to manifest itself in increasingly reckless behavior. Coming up, Harry confronts his personal demons, then he hits rock bottom. And later, Harry falls in love.